This is a play group of two-year-olds. They're always on the go. They're clumsy and roly-poly, but constantly working at the business of controlling their bodies. Crawling and climbing. Pushing and steering. Sliding, whoops, trying another way. Is it possible to walk up a slippery slide? Well, you only find out by trying. Oh, well, there are lots of other things to do. From a grown-up point of view, the two-year-olds seem aimless, but there's learning in just pure handling of objects. Jay's far from master of his own body, but he's unconcerned by his tumbles. Pulled by curiosity about the next thing in sight, he pauses and stares. He works hard for a few moments. Most of the time he looks quite competent, but baby child as he is, he still needs grown-up help. These twos have many qualities in common, and if parents understand how most twos behave, they'll know what to expect from their own child. But while they do behave in a way typical of their age, each child is an individual as different in mental and emotional makeup as they are in physical appearance. Most twos look like lovable picture book babies. But they can be exasperating. Now, for the first time, they are able to fight for what they want. Where did all this aggression spring from? How do we handle this tough little two? Can we explain to Roddy that he's not being gentlemanly? No. Lectures on etiquette will come much later. Just as the two likes to express his feeling with his body, he responds best to simple pats of comfort and good-humored remonstrations. But the greatest magic is distraction. He'll learn gradually that hitting the other fellow doesn't pay. But the teacher can't be everywhere at once, and uh, Robert seems to be destined to be unseated. Uh, never underestimate the power of a woman, even at two. We don't remember how it felt to be two. So we must learn by observing closely with tolerance, good humor, and understanding. Twos are only just beginning to play together. They're happy playing side by side, absorbed in their own thoughts, enjoying neighborly companionship. But as soon as one interferes with the other, there's trouble. Before you can really learn to share toys, you must first learn the feeling of mine. It's mine. It's mine. These twos are learning the feeling of possession. Christina reflects her gains. Robert finds comfort from his thumb. But social contacts are only part of being two. There is so much to learn. How things work. How things feel. 
the squishy, soapy cloth. It's the joy of feeling as much as learning how Mum does it. And rubber, when it's wet, is shiny and tastes good. Tasting is still important at two. Clay has another feel, wonderfully icky. And the use of a tool like a paintbrush combines feeling and result. It takes lots of concentration and an arbitrary use of colors. There's learning in books and the informative comments of adults. Blocks are a wonderful toy for children of all ages, but twos need a little help to get started. Nothing lasts long with twos. Here they change to pushing and loading. If somebody spoils it, there's always a doll to talk it out with. Acting out scenes from home is an important part of life. How can you understand unless you try it yourself? The beautiful, competent two, so completely independent. And yet so lacking in judgment. Let's build it so it's more steady. Instead of just saying no, no, teacher is ready with positive suggestions that are fun in themselves. For the two-year-old, there are so many choices, so many ways to do things. One can make a game of resisting or have fun conforming and learning how. Yes, the teacher of twos has many experiences during a morning. She needs alertness, ingenuity, and a deepening understanding of growth to do a successful job. But what about the poor mother who is in a rush to get home and get lunch for the baby and the big brother? Let's see what it's like to be the mother of a two-and-a-half-year-old. Here's how the day goes. Mommy! Mommy! 6.20? Oh, maybe she'll fall asleep again. Of course, Jim always manages to sleep through. And 20 minutes later... Mommy! Mommy! Oh, well, she might as well stay up. Of course, she gave her plenty of toys, but it's always the one that drops out that Julia wants. And breakfast is so restful. This little routine seems to occupy a good part of the day. Or struggling to get her on when she must be nearly bursting. When she is quiet in the bathroom, there's usually a reason. Then comes the hour by herself, when Mother is supposed to get some housework done. In no time, she's calling for help.
How can she do it so quickly? And as for those booby traps called snowsuits, come on, rubber legs. And as soon as she's out, she wants to come in. The difficulty is to think of something enticing for her to do outside. Of course, you shouldn't say no too often, but what else would you suggest? Pouring water on the baby's head, tipping over the plants. Julia loves this sitter, but just because mother's in a hurry, she fusses. It's so restful to leave the house with wails ringing in your ears. It was a good movie, they told her afterwards. But over the past few months of bringing up her too, Julia's mother has learned a few tricks. She now removes the breakables and the easily destroyed things. Her husband copied the nursery school blocks, and they made the stove out of a butter box. It's better to pour water here than on the baby's head. Mrs. Jones lets her help with little jobs, even if it's more work in the end. Julia needs to feel useful. While she doesn't like Julia to smother the baby, mother understands how hard it is for her to accept her rival. Gentle explaining and some extra loving go further than scoldings. When something has to be taken away from Julia, she still has tantrums, but they don't grate on Mrs. Jones' nerves so much. She knows that Julia is practicing asserting herself. She's glad she has a mind of her own. And mother doesn't waste time on logic. She uses distraction and positive suggestions. There's lots of time later on for talking it out. Twos don't get their reputation for nothing. You can't condone cold cream smearing, but you can understand the fascination. Too bad the jar wasn't put away. And finger-sucking is annoying, but the less stress put on it, the better. Mrs. Jones stresses the positive things, the right toys, books that are especially written for twos, really suitable records. And little trips around town increase Julia's understanding of her world and stimulate her imaginary play. Jim spends as much time with Julia as he can. Routines become events when Dad takes over. Roughhousing is Julia's favorite sport at the moment. The sitter is asked to come a bit early, so Julia gets used to the idea that she's here. But even if she's had a wonderfully happy day, she still doesn't want to go to bed. How consoling to know that the terrible two becomes the trusting three. Here are the same children in the same play yard a year later. Let's watch their behavior at three. There's less running to and fro, more concentration, and the beginnings of playing together. They're more organized about what they're trying to do, but they're still not always successful at controlling things. Jay is less tumbly than he was at two. He knows exactly where he's going. He manages the slide with ease, and he's more interested in what other children are doing, not nearly as self-centered as he was. And about sharing things, the attack is less primitive, but three still have a long way to go. 
His determination to get his own way has in most cases turned into a genuine desire to do what is expected of him. Even some simple logic is beginning to penetrate. Let him have his turn, and then he'll let you have a turn. Maybe he will. No, I guess not. An interesting alternative is still necessary sometimes. Now that he can really talk, he's almost too conversational. Sometimes he seems so grown up that it's hard to remember that he's still only three. But we mustn't overestimate the three's ability. They're all too anxious to try things beyond their capacity. Now he doesn't just pile up blocks, his buildings have names. But there is still a great deal to learn. Balance, proportion, weights. They still like to feel the texture of things, but clay is molded now instead of just felt. If they're given a chance to experiment with creating things now, even if they never become great artists, they'll appreciate and enjoy artistic things more for all the years to come. They have to learn about people, and one of the best ways is to imitate them. These children are not just pretending to be big. This is their way of learning how it feels to be big. Roddy is greedy. Perhaps Julia grabbed too many sandwiches once and she felt her social error. Perhaps Mother didn't scold her at all. But now she acts out what she felt, not what happened. Certainly, Julia and Roddy never saw this happen. But that is the beauty of three-year-old play. It can change quickly from one thing to another without any worry about what is suitable or correct. It's not only imitation, it's full of imagination as well. To these children, blocks and a plank are a fire reel. Robert would like to get on too, but the three needs help in his first real steps at group play. Some need it more than others. But usually, just a word from an adult is enough to get him started. But what about the three at home? No problems. She's wonderful. Of course, there are little things like talking and doing at the same time. She stops doing and just talks. Dressing and undressing take longer now, but letting her do it herself will be a time saver in the end. For when she likes to do it is when she learns to do it. Mrs. Jones is not concerned by lapses in appetite. She knows they're common at this age and that many a feeding problem has been started by threats and cajoling. Julia often doesn't sleep in the afternoon, but she still has a play nap. Sometimes she has unreasonable fears. Going into the cupboard, for instance. Mrs. Jones is sympathetic and she doesn't scoff. She knows that the best treatment is to make the subject familiar. Out with the gang in the afternoon, where most threes spend a lot of their time, there are many troubles and tears. Usually, about this age, mother decides that some neighbor's child is having a bad influence. Nearer the truth is the threes just can't cope with the gang. But in small doses, with lots of assurance, it's good for them. The Jones 
have found that providing outdoor equipment is one step towards solving the street play problem. Small light ladders are lots of fun. And a large packing box and a few blocks and boards provide endless imaginary adventures. The children can change it from a climbing tower to a cozy house at will, depending on how they feel. But the most hectic hours in the Jones household are still from five to seven. And just when mother is busiest, the hidden jealousy which is still there comes out in the form of unreasonable demands for attention. But Julia really enjoys being a useful member of society. And she's beginning to understand a future promise, such as, help me now, and then you can come down and see the guests. Mrs. Jones is very proud of Julia. She's so much better at three than she was at two. Mrs. Jones thinks she's solved the problem of child training. But wait until she sees her at four. <laughs> 